California faces big problems and crises on many fronts, from record homelessness to rising crime to surging cost of living. But what are the politicians focused on? Coming up, I'm going to share three absurd, insane proposals that they're focusing on while the rest of the state suffers. I'm Carl DeMaio, chairman of Reform California, and there's no doubt California is in a mess of problems. Rising crime, surging homelessness, failing schools, an open border, and of course, a sky-high cost of living. All of this has resulted in our residents fleeing the state. They can't afford to live here anymore. They can't stomach living here anymore. But California's politicians seem to be completely out of touch. And one way to examine that is the fact that instead of solving problems, they are making them worse with a number of insane proposals on the issues of crime and homelessness and cost of living. Um, we cover that, those topics all the time on this podcast. But another way to look at how untethered from reality California politicians are is to look at what they are focusing on, what they are trying to do. Um, in terms of these, uh, you know, stunt proposals that they're rolling out. I've got three of the crazy ones just from this week, okay? And you can find these absurd distractions, shiny object games that these politicians engage in almost every week. But here are three that are just happening this week alone. First up, San Francisco, which is a dying city. It is uh, an insane city with surging crime, record homelessness, the highest cost of living you can possibly imagine. What are they focusing on? Well, this week they passed a city law declaring themselves to be a sanctuary city. Uh, yeah, they're already a sanctuary city for illegal immigrants. Now they want to be a sanctuary city for transgender people. Um, do you really, San Francisco, do you really need to pass a law to, you know, change the impression that uh, people might have about your city? I think when people think San Francisco and LGBT, yeah, they probably are like synonymous. So I don't think you need to declare anything on that front. I think that point is pretty much established. But here's the, the question I will ask. Why not declare San Francisco a sanctuary for taxpayers? by lowering your taxes or a sanctuary for, oh, I don't know, small business owners and retail shops by cracking down on crime or maybe a sanctuary for anyone who just simply wants to live in a clean uh, and safe neighborhood by cracking down on your epic homeless crisis. Now, San Francisco doesn't want to become a sanctuary for the things that cities should be a sanctuary for. Instead, they want to play the shiny object game of woke identity politics. I mean, seriously, does this do anything? Does it move the needle in any way, shape, or form? Oh, it's certainly um, you know, designed to distract voters in San Francisco from the epic failure of these Looney Tune far-left politicians. It also is designed to perpetuate a false narrative, that somehow there's a wave of hate that's gripping the nation, and it might come to San Francisco, but we're drawing the line. There's no hate against LGBT people in this country. I mean, seriously, 1982 is calling. They want their social agenda back. Uh, America is, you know, accepting, inclusive. Celebrate it. Acknowledge it. Don't try to disparage it. So... They are um, uh, out there grandstanding on that. Next up is, as our colleges and universities are gripped with um, these uh, extremist uh, protests in favor of Hamas terrorists, as uh, the colleges are facing financial uh, problems and the students are facing financial problems because they can't afford their debt service because they're basically getting um, worthless degrees, uh, the University of Southern California has come up with an ins insane idea. They've announced that they are going to use your taxpayer money to give away free 
master's degrees in fine arts. Because Lord knows we have a shortage of baristas. Oh, I, I mean, um, we have a shortage of actors and writers, right? The dramatic folks, artists. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I could see a public purpose in saying, look, we're going to give free tuition away for doctors and nurses, psychiatrists, since we have a homelessness crisis. Um, but uh, what's the public purpose in giving a master's degree to someone in fine arts? What's next? A master's degree in gender studies? Uh, insane. Uh, the reality is that they're having to give away these degrees for free because the degrees are largely worthless. That's right. Absolutely not worth the debt that the students would have to go into in order to get the degree. Again, I'm not disparaging arts programs. And, you know, uh, I love the fact that we've got creative artists out there that can make, uh, you know, interesting new movies that we enjoy. Sadly, though, a lot of these artists have uh, decided to abandon their, their, uh, their trade, their vocation and become political analysts or political prognosticators by infusing politics into their, their movies, their storylines, their books, et cetera. So, um, yeah, USC, knowing that it can't actually charge tuition for these worthless degrees, now giving it away for free, stating the obvious. Starbucks must be just thrilled. They're like, oh, wow, you know, this is great. You know, maybe that will reduce the pressure on all these baristas coming in saying, I need a, a wage increase. I'm going to join the union because I've got my master's of fine arts. You know, I have a master's degree. You can't ask me to do that. I'm, I'm worth so much more. The next uh, item is California has decided to pass a law to declare that the seashell is our next state symbol. Because Lord knows we've been staying up late at night wondering, gosh, couldn't California use another state symbol? Um, why we are even distracting anyone with this. And this is probably going to go through a hearing at a committee in the assembly in the state Senate. Then it will be debated on the floor. Which seashell? How do we uh, change up the logos? Uh, what sort of artwork will be used? How many consultants will hire uh, to implement the new program? You want to know what the symbol for California should be? I, I, I've got, I got the symbol here. Yeah, that's right. You knew we were going here. A homeless tent. That's right. Put that homeless tent or maybe a pile of feces up in um, San Francisco on the sidewalk. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's the state symbol for California. Why? Because politicians in Sacramento and all the way down at the local level, they refuse to actually focus on the problems that matter to you and me. They're playing all these grandstanding, feel-good diversion tricks to distract voters from the fact that they have failed miserably in moving the needle on problems that we care about. And in fact, they're, they're making the situation much worse. At Reform California, we are asking you to join the fight to restore a little adult leadership to our state, to push back against the extremism. Our program is rolling forward for the November 2024 election, but we need your help in that. Here's how you can get part of uh, this whole uh, movement that we've created in our state. First and foremost, we are recruiting, training, and supporting and endorsing candidates for every office we can find. Because I'm sick and tired of leftists getting a free pass in California. We should file a good, honest candidate for every office from water board, mosquito abatement district, all the way up to the legislative races. If you're interested, go to our website, reformcalifornia.org and contact us. We have training classes coming up. We work with candidates to help them fill out the paperwork and file their candidate statements. Don't sit there and worry about, oh, am I qualified? If you are honest and can balance a checkbook, you are infinitely more qualified than the idiots that are in these offices currently. Second, the way we support our candidates the best, the, the, the biggest investment we make is in our Reform California Plain English Voter Guide. Here is our, our landing website for that election uh, um, uh, uh, guide, uh, 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 
electionguidecalifornia.org, I believe is the, the, let me see, make sure election guide. Yes. Electionguidecalifornia.org is the direct URL, or you can get to it through reformcalifornia.org. Um, and we do a voter guide in uh, the statewide uh, races, as well as in each of the local races. We absolutely need your help to distribute the voter guide. It, it is important because it, it doesn't have any partisan labels on it. It's the plain English voter guide at Reform California for tax fighters, crime stoppers, school reformers, homeless uh, solvers. Um, we focus on those core 70% issues, border uh, securers. We look at the 70% issues that have wide range appeal and we make our endorsements and we, we support candidates on that basis. We also give a plain English description of all the ballot measures. And that's key because you're gonna have 15 to 20 ballot measures on the November ballot. Check it out and sign up at the bottom. The reason why you should sign up at the bottom is we are still updating the, the voter guide as candidates file for office and we endorse them after vetting them. Um, and we don't know how many ballot measures will be on in each local area. So sign up, first name, last name, email, phone, zip code, so we can send that to you via email and text in October. We send it out in October, October 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. We send it out because ballots hit the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th of October for the month of our election. And then, of course, in the month of the election, um, we need you to distribute it by sharing it organically through your social media accounts, email, text with your friends. Word of, mar of mouth marketing is key for this plain English voter guide. Uh, we also do mailers to voters with the voter guide and canvassers go door to door. Please chip in a contribution at the site so we can get the voter guide out there. If you want to stop these insane, um, feel good, woke stunts that we just covered, the three just from this week, and get common sense public policy back in California, join the fight with Reform California. Go to the website now, sign up. Until next time, Carl DeMaio, Chairman of Reform California. Help us break through the censorship of the liberal media. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and smash that notification button so you can stay up to date on all the developments in California news and politics. Also, please visit the website, reformcalifornia.org, for ongoing news coverage and to join one of our campaigns in the fight to take back our state you can, please sign up as a volunteer or chip in a contribution. This episode of Reform California with Carl DeMaio, paid for by Carl DeMaio for State Assembly 2024.